Hello everyone, it's Nady, and today we'll be testing out the Juno and Company Spongebob sponges. As you beautiful people know, this is about the products and not the people behind them. Any tiff you may have with them, please cast it away because this is a channel of positive energy. Okay? Thank you. Oh my sassy little starfishes, how you doing today? I hope wherever you're at in the world, you're having a fantastic day so far. It's another gorgeous day here in the neighborhood, and Ron is sitting over there on a chair peeking out at the sunshine and I'm about to do the same after I finish filming. I'm so excited. But I'm also really excited for this, this just hopped onto my doorstep, and I don't know that I've tried anything from Juno and Company. I do remember their OG microfiber sponge kind of going viral, and so I ordered it, and I think it was so viral that it took for fucking ever to get to me, and then by the time I got it, it just wasn't a hot commodity anymore. But this arrived to me very, very quickly, and I think they actually sold out, like, immediately, so you go, bitches. I don't really know a whole lot about these, I just know they're not supposed to suck up as much liquid, which, I mean, tell me your secrets. The back of this says microfiber and yellow and poor is he? Oh my god, this is bringing back so many memories. The microfiber Spongebob makeup sponge will deliver a natural airbrushed finish to your looks while helping you save 50% of your product just like your favorite Juno Velvet sponge. And then the pink Patrick one is a loyal and reliable like the lovable sea star it's inspired by. This Patrick star sponge made with velvet soft microfiber bristles and a dewdrop shape for controlled stippling will be your new best friend. I love making new friends, that's perfect. Oh and I guess this comes with a little soapy bar? Okay, let me hop onto the website and see if there's any little details that I need to know about this. This retails for $24, which really that isn't that bad for four sponges and a soap. Just like me, you can use it wet or dry. It's perfect for liquid foundations, can squealers, and contouring. So it's basically just like any other sponge except it doesn't soak shit up. See, are there any reviews on their actual website? Oh, five out of five stars, not too shabby. Although when the reviews are on the actual website, I do have to be a little bit skeptical. They say, OMG, this brings back such nostalgia for me. Just play by order and can't wait to test these out. Bitch, you should not be giving this a review. You don't even have it. Just ordered these. Can't wait to get mine. What the hell? Okay, I'm sorry, but people should not leave reviews if they don't have the fucking product. It does look like they're currently in stock on Beautylish's website, but they don't have any reviews there either, so we're kind of going into this with a blind eye. Nothing wrong with that. I kind of like that. But the moment I saw these, I instantly imagined doing a neon pink and yellow look, so I think that's what we're gonna do today in honor of Spongebob and Patrick. Oh, the ultimate duo. Were they more than friends? Were they lovers? We'll always assume, but never know. I think it's safe to say they were probably family. Okay, let's open these little bitches and feel these daddies out. I don't think I've ever felt one. Oh! That is very interesting. Feels like a sponge, but like a crunchier sponge. Oh my, it does not smell pleasant. Oh god, it smells like my grandma's pillowcases up at our cabin. Like mothballs, missed opportunities, and childhood dreams. Hmm, that's not pleasant. Maybe I should give these a wash before I use them. Oh, but that's so cute. Look at the little faces in them. I love that. Oh god, can you even see the SpongeBob one? This is very bright lighting. Well, take my word for it. The SpongeBob one has a little SpongeBob face in it. Oh, and the little tiny testicle ones have little Gary eyes on them. That's precious. Since these are fragrance like formaldehyde, and I don't want to smell like a cadaver today, let's go ahead and wash these. Here's what the little soap looks like. Very cute packaging. Oh god, I love this. What does it smell like? Ooh, it smells very, very sweet. Kind of like candy. Why does that bring back childhood memories too? What is this? It's supposed to smell like bikini bottom bubbles? Oh, what is that smell? I can picture it in my mind. It's like ivory soap with like baby shampoo. Kind of sweet, like synthetic grape, but also a little bit masculine. I really like that. Okay, I will be right back. I'm gonna go ahead and wash these. Why why don't I just wash one so we can see the difference in size? Let's use SpongeBob today. And then I'm also gonna wash one of these little nuggets here. All right, these are nice, moist, and juicy, and very, very plump. The first thing that I instantly noticed was that the soap is very, very soft, and also these didn't shed their color like a lot of sponges. The first time I wash them, I get like a sink full of pink or whatever the fuck color the sponge is. These stayed pretty true to their color, and they feel so cool, but I do wish that the smell disappeared with the soap because they smell so strong of mothballs. It's not enough to make me not want to use them, but if you're going to use these on a client, maybe spray them with a fragrance setting spray first, just so that it doesn't smell like you're rubbing a dustpan on their face. But also, even though I did get these wet, they feel dry. They're just a bit more plump. So here's little Patrick, and here's SpongeBob. Obviously, this little bitch got bigger. And then here are these guys. I just can't get over how they feel. They feel amazing. It's like if a fleece blanket fucked a velvet curtain and had a love child, this would be that. I really like the way this feels. 
So let's go ahead and hop into a look. I do have a little bit of face oil on my face, but I'm also gonna prime with some Laura Mercier hydrating face primer. I want extra hydration today because I think I might test out the Laura Mercier translucent honey powder. They just sent it to me and I'm dying to try it. But their powders do tend to dry my skin out, but I really wanna see how a powder works with this. And I think the most liquidy foundation that I have is the foundation that I always fucking use on this channel, but I also kind of waste a lot because I get soaked into pretty much any tool that I apply it with. And that is my Dior Backstage. This is the shade 2CR. And I want to try plopping a few drops on there and see if it soaks in. No, this is sitting there as if it's like a really thick foundation, but it is not. It is super liquidy, like drip. Okay, so here we go. I guess I'll start on this half of my face. Oh, oh my. This coverage right here is way more than I would get with a normal sponge using the amount of product that I just used. What the fuck? I wouldn't necessarily say it looks any different on my skin. Oh my gosh, is this too light for me? It totally is. Sorry about that, but once I apply contour and all that shit, it'll look fine, I hope. I mean, it's still soaked up some, like, if I squeeze it, foundation comes out of it. Actually, let me just kind of drag the sponge over to this side and see if I can, like, clean this bitch up. Maybe if I kind of press it in a little bit hard, I can squeeze the rest of the product out. Typically, I don't squeeze things to get liquid out, but this works. Well, shit. Oh, God, I've got some in my hair. Ah, fuck, I'm gonna leave it. It wants to be beautiful today, too. Huh, that is very interesting. I'm still gonna go in with a little bit more because this half of my face is still kind of missing foundation and it really does do a fantastic job of blending things out like it makes it look very very natural on my skin which even this foundation though it is my favorite it doesn't always look the best on my skin but this looks super natural as if it's like a second skin damn try that little squeezy thing again oh there's some okay this really doesn't soak up a lot of product like if i went like that with a normal sponge i feel like product wouldn't come out mostly water would well how about that i'm just gonna go in with one more little squirt all over the rest of my face just to have a little bit more coverage. There we go. And then let me kind of show you a close up of what it looks like when I squeeze this and how I'm still able to get more product out. Are you able to see that? Like it's on my fingers. And so yeah, I guess it does soak some product up because there's still some left in it. But I swear if I did that to a normal sponge, I wouldn't be able to like squeeze it out and reuse the product. Don't know if you should do that or if that'll ruin the sponge, but I mean, you might as well use it. Sweet tits. All right, let's go on to the concealer. What shall we use today? Just kidding. We all know I'm going to use the only one that I ever use. That is the Dior. What is this? I don't know. Something from Dior that probably is a little bit too dark for me. Yep. Okay. So of course we're still going to go in with it. And I think for this, I'm going to try blending out with this lull gibbet here. Let's just go like that. Oh God, that really does feel great. Oh, let's see. How does the sponge look? Oh damn. There is a lot of product on there, but also, I mean, I just dipped it into wet concealer. So like what the fuck else would happen? I'll try wringing it out like I did the other sponge and see if I can salvage any of this. Ooh, but this is doing wonders for this concealer. Fuck. Honestly, when I was growing up watching Spongebob, one, I never thought that I would be reviewing a Spongebob sponge, and two, I never thought that I'd ever be, like, a makeup reviewer. So, honestly, this is kind of really fucking cool to me. Just the fact that I'm now a grown-ass adult and they're still coming out with products from my childhood. I love that. Okay, let's do the little squeezy test. Honestly, I don't think this little squeezy test proves anything, but it's kind of fun to do. It's like popping a zit, which I do not recommend popping a zit, but some people really enjoy watching that. I don't know if it's just this product, but it's really not squeezing much product out, but I don't think we lost any coverage. Like, it did a great job, did it not? My under eyes look fantastic. They're just like my personality. It's fucking great, damn it. I do already really like these products, but I think they look extra banging today. What do you think? Yes? No? I am very, very impressed so far. And here is the Laura Mercy Translucent powder. It almost looks a little reminiscent of like a banana powder, which I typically don't use because it just adds unnecessary yellowness to me, but we're still gonna try it today. I know you're supposed to use this with like a poof that it came with. If this doesn't look good under my eyes or if it fucks something up, I'll try it again a different day with different products. But I'm gonna take the clean side of my damp sponge that really isn't even wet. It's just enlarged. Love playing with enlarged things. And I'm gonna dip in right here and let's take a lot because YouTuber. It does seem to stick pretty well. Well, not as good as a normal damp sponge, but it is still picking up product. Oh my, that is pressing it in quite nicely. Actually, why don't I just take this all over the rest of my face? I'm just gonna kind of stipple it in. It is drying my skin out the slightest bit, but it's also adding a beautiful blurring effect and it does have a good bit of pigment to it. Like, I don't know if you can see the difference in size, but like this one is a bit more yellow. So I think probably in a different video, I'll use this not under my eyes where I've highlighted and try it on the rest of my face. But since I applied 
it to this side. We're just gonna use it everywhere. This really is doing a fantastic job at applying the powder. Like it's pressing it the fuck into my skin and it's not adding textures like a lot of sponges do for me. I know one of the selling points of using a sponge is that the texture is very skin-like so it kind of creates a skin looking effect. And this isn't really giving a skin effect. It's more just like making everything a little bit blurry. I don't know y'all. I really like these sponges so far. I'm kind of disappointed that I never reviewed the OG. Like what the fuck? I didn't review it, did I? I really feel like I would have remembered but also I can't remember what I had for breakfast. So I did kind of end up losing pretty much all of my highlights. So I'm gonna take some more translucent powder. I think this is Laura Mercier and it's like an extra brightening powder. And I'm gonna set a good bit of this under my eyes, not only to help brighten things up, but also to catch any fallout from my eyeshadow. Oh shit, you know, I haven't even contoured or anything. Why did I put some down here to like bake? What the fuck? I've already come this far, so we'll do the other side. Yeah. The sponge seemed to grab that powder a lot better. Like that shit is clinging on for dear life. For the eyes, I'm gonna go in with my all time favorite, Gerard Cosmetics Clean Canvas. I think they actually just launched more shades of this, like white, dark, medium, and light. This is probably gonna be a simple but bold look. Hopefully it turns out. Feel free to judge me if it doesn't. But on the crease, I'm gonna start with some Tuscan Sun by Makeup Geek. And I'm just gonna go back and forth all along the crease line and blend it upwards towards my brow. Honestly, Makeup Geek has like some kick-ass shadows. Yup, see, the shit blends out in like two strokes. We love a good pump and dump shadow. Then on the crease, I'm also gonna mix some Peach for the Stars with some Chickadee. And we'll softly blend that out back and forth as well. Honestly, all of this will probably be covered up by the neon shadows that I'm gonna use, but why not pack on a pound of makeup on my eyeballs before we get to that point? All right, so now for a little Patrick Pink, I'm gonna go in with Andy Candy Makeup's Bleeding Heart Loose Pigment. And this stuff is so fucking pigmented. Oh my God, in my monitor, it looks like Hunter Orange. <gasps> does it look like that to you or does it look pink? It is like bright as pink. That is so weird. I'm gonna take a little bit of that on a fluffy brush. And I did put a lot of this powder down because this is a loose pigment. It does have a lot of fallout, but it is so impactful. Fucking love this stuff. All right, so I'm gonna take this and start right here on the outer corner and kind of push it into the crease. <gasps> uh-huh. And I'm gonna take that back and forth in little baby stippling motions and then slowly work it up towards the brow. And then with the tiniest little motions, I'm gonna blend the edges out. I love neon pigment so damn much. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut the crease and to do that, I'm gonna use this NYX Full Coverage Cream Concealer. I have no idea if this will work or not. We'll see. All right, my little crease is cut. Now by the same brand, I'm gonna dip into Lemoncello. Oh, look at that. That is what my soul is made of. <laughs> I like this. A totally everyday wearable kind of look. And then with whatever's left on my brush, I'm just gonna kind of smudge the two edges together and create kind of like a transition shade. And then to help that crease that I cut pop a little bit more, I took some lash glue and just outlined it. And now I'm going in with this glitter. Glitter, I know. Who the fuck am I? I don't know if you can even see that, but in person, it's really cool. Like it's multicolored. It looks like a frosted donut. Now on the lower lash, I'm gonna go back in with those two kind of peachy and orangey makeup geek shadows and just smoke them out. <coughs> oh my God, pigment up in my lungs. I'll be coughing glitter for a week. And then right up next to the lashes, I'm gonna press in some of this neon pink. And on the waterline, I'm taking like a dusty kind of reddish orangey brown shade. Hopefully this shit is eye safe. And here we are with our final look, just as promised, very simple. But actually, no, I do quite like it. It turned more into like a red and yellow color, but I don't mind. So these sponges, I actually really quite like them. Will they replace my normal poof poofs though? Ooh, I don't know about that. I feel like for the more watery foundations, I probably would use this, but then when I have like a more thicker foundation, I'd still stick to my round normal makeup poofs. But at the same time, I'm very intrigued. Like I want to keep playing with them. I have no idea how long these are supposed to last. Like, can you just throw it in the washer? I know it comes with that soap, but I really want to get that smell out. I do really like the way it blended out my foundation and my concealer. And I'm noticing that there's not really as many creases as there normally is. I think this just does a better job of like pushing the product into your skin and where I applied that powder, which is pretty much all over my face. Normally it dries the fuck out of my skin, but it's not as bad as it normally is. So my sexy bitches, do I recommend these? I honestly do. It's not like it has to be the SpongeBob ones. I think the original one is just as good. These ones are just like a little throwback. And I feel like the price is pretty fucking good too. I think these are even cheaper than like the real technique sponges, which those are hella inexpensive. I really like these. I'm so glad that we got them. Please let me know down in the comments below if 
you've tried them. Do you want them? Do you not want them? Do you love them? Do you hate them? I don't have lipstick on my teeth, do I? I probably should have checked before. So yes, there you have it. Before you go, please make sure to check out my new Poplex Live channel. There I'm going to be doing all my lives from now on. I'll be sure to link it to you down below. Also, if you want to support me and my channel a little bit more, please feel free to join us on Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Poplux. There you get videos a day early. You get Patreon-only content. There's lots of little baby nuggets over there. Plus, best part, it is cheap, fun, and fancy just like me. And like always, please be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell down below so that you're notified anytime I upload a new video. Don't forget my newest collection of highlighters, including Black Ice, which does change from black to white, is available at thepoplex.com. Also, my latest album, Kiss of Fame, is available everywhere online that music is sold. Thank you so much to everyone who's supporting them. Comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter at Official Lady, and you can follow me online at thepoplex.com. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all, and I will see you again soon. Bye.